Welcome back to probability. We're going to do a probability review of Den Venn diagrams, tables, and words. It's kind of a mixed review. So let's see what we remember. Okay, create a Venn diagram for the following information. Event A. Gail, Allen, and Dante like scary movies. Allen, Tim, and Laura like comedies. Gina and Kelly don't prefer either of these two types. So maybe they like, I don't know, love stories. Okay, so we're going to call this event A. And in here we have Gail and Dante. But notice Alan is in both groups. So guess what? Alan is in circle A, but he's also going to be in circle B. Okay, and then over here in circle B, I have Tim and Laura. And then Gina and Kelly are outside both of those circles because they don't like scary movies or comedies. Okay, list the outcomes, also known as sample space for A union B. So all of A and all of B together. Well, that would be Gail, Dante, Alan, Tim, and Laura. That's the union. List the outcome for the intersection A, intersect B. Well, where do they intersect? Where they cross? Only Alan is in the intersection. List the outcomes for A prime. So not in A. So everything that's not in A, well, that's Tim, Laura, Gina, and Kelly. Tim, Laura, Gina, and, whoops, and Kelly. Okay, now let's do some probabilities. What is the probability that they're in group B? Well, group B is how many? One, two, three. We have three out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're only seven, so three sevenths. Even though Alan's in both groups, you can't go up here and count them all because Alan's counted twice. Okay, how about the probability of a union B prime? Okay, remember prime means opposite, so not, so that's two out of seven. Only two are not in that union. And then the intersection, find the probability of the intersection. We have one in the intersection, so one seventh. And that's, that's pretty easy, quick little review of Venn diagrams. Okay, the table below represents a table about upperclassmen suggestions for a class activity talent shows, field trips, and dances, and 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. So let's look at some of these um, intersections, unions, and complements, and even conditions. Okay, find the probability that you're in 11th grade. Uh, well, first thing we need to do is what? Add everything up. So out of the people surveyed, 14 are 10th graders, 8 and 6 is another 14. That's um, 12, only 12 seniors. And then how many like the talent show? 11. How many like the field trip? Um, 12. And how many people want a dance? 17. Okay, let's make sure they all add up because this is, this is key. You need to just make sure you're doing your arithmetic correctly and make sure, okay, it looks like 40 on this column. Let's see 11 plus 12 plus 17. Yep, 40. Okay, so just make sure these all add up. Okay, so what's the probability they're in 11th grade? Well, 14 out of 40, right? 14 out of the total. And that gives us 7 twentieths. I don't even need a calculator for that. Probability of dance. How many people like the dance? So people, 17 out of 40 want the dance. 17 out of 40. That one won't reduce either. Okay, how about the probability of 10th union dance? So all 10th graders plus all the people that want the dance. Well, how many 10th graders are there? We have 14 10th graders. How many want the dance? 17 want the dance. So that's 31. But we've counted which group twice. We've counted the 10th graders that like the dance. We've counted those two people twice. So we have to take that out. So that's only 29 out of 40. So that had an overlap, so we had to subtract that, that little overlap. So we, we only got 29 out of there. Hmm, why is that screen not clear for you guys? There we go. Okay, 
find the probability of the field trip intersecting with 11th grade. So this is when I'd li like to do more of the Venn diagram. So we're going to take field trip column intersecting with 11th grade. So field trip intersecting with 11th is 3 out of 40. So 3 out of 40 is that answer. Okay, how about the probability of 12 intersect talent show complement? That means the complement. Hmm. Okay, so let's take the 12th grade intersecting with a talent show. How many are 12th graders and uh, want the talent show? Two. So two out of 40. So what's the complement of 2 out of 40? Well, if you don't want those two, you got 38 that do want it. So it's 38 out of 40, which reduces to what? 19 twentieths. Okay. Uh, find the probability that, that they're in 10th grade given they want the field trip. Okay, so now this is a condition. The condition is the subgroup field trips. So we're only looking at the field trip column. So out of this group, out of those 12, how many are 10th graders? 8. 8 out of 12, which reduces to 2 thirds. And then find the probability of talent show given 10th grade. Okay, now it's the opposite. So now our condition is we're looking at 10th graders. So we're looking at these 14 kids. How many want the talent show? 4 out of 14. 4 out of 14, which is 2 sevenths. There you go. So that's how we do all these mixed together. So hopefully you can kind of see how it's working. Now let's talk mutually exclusive. Choose which of the following are mutually exclusive, which means they don't have any overlapping outcomes. Choosing a king or a diamond in a deck of cards. Mm, no, that one's definitely not because you have a king of diamonds. Choosing a band student or a math student in a classroom. Well, a kid can be in the band and be a math student, so it couldn't be that one. Rolling a two and then getting an even sum or a sum less than seven. Rolling a two and getting an even sum, so like four, the sum of four, you can roll it with a two, or a sum less than seven, then that's less than seven, so it's not that one. Choosing a jack or choosing a five. Well, guess what? It's that one. You can't, those are two independent events. You can't choose a jack and a five. They're two different outcomes. So the answer for this one is D. Which of the following pair of events is independent? Okay, well, hmm, I remember doing this independent test. We take the probability of A times B and see if it's equal to the intersection. So let's take 0 0.08 times 0 0.4. We multiply them, so 0 0.08 times 0 0.4. That's 0 0.032. So this one is not independent. No, this one's not. That's dependent because it didn't work. Okay, probability of 0.3 times 0.15. 0.3 times 0.15, 0 0.045, oh, that one worked. Okay, let's double check the last one. 0 0.16 and 0 0.24, 0 0.16 times 0 0.24, looks like they added those together. Yeah, that one doesn't work. No, it's not, it's dependent. Okay, so that one was easy. It's a B, so that's how you test for independent. Okay, next one. The sum of two dice. What's the probability of it being even or a sum greater than nine? Okay, sum, we need to think about this chart. So I don't know if you need to actually create it, but even sums, those are 18 out of the 36 possibilities. And you may want to go back and draw your chart. How many have a sum greater than nine? Well, 10. 11 and 12. So how many tens are there? There are three tens, there are two 11s, and one 12. So that's six outcomes out of 36. But we've counted which group twice? The even ones. So we have to subtract the three tens and the 12. So we're subtracting four of those outcomes. 
So that leaves us with tw what? 20 out of 36, which reduces to 10 eighteenths, which reduces to 5 ninths. 5 ninths is the answer. Okay? Uh, the sum less than 7 or a sum greater than 10. Hmm, I think I might have to pull back my chart so I can look at those. Let's go back and get these. So here's my chart, and you can recreate this if you need to. So we're looking for a sum less than 7. So that's the 6s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 of those. So 15 of these are less than 7 and a sum greater than 10. So not 10, but 11 and 12. So we got three of those. Now, did those overlap at all? They didn't. So that's just 18 out of 36, which is half, right? Half. Okay, how about an odd sum or a sum less than eight? So odd sums, we know odd, that's half of them. So 18, half of them are odd, half are even. And it's an or problem, so we're going to add. These are all adding because they're or problems, right? I should have mentioned that at the beginning. And a sum less than 8. Okay, let's get our sums less than 8. That's all the 7s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 18, 19, 20, 21 of them. 21 out of 36. But how many of those were odd sums? Uh-oh. We're going to have to recount this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 we've counted twice. So we've got to subtract that 12. So that's 18 plus 21 minus 12. That's 12. And that gives us 27 of them out of 36. And that reduces by 3. So 9 twelfths reduced by 3 again. 3 fourths, 3 fourths. So hopefully you can see how all that works, right? You've got 18 that are odd sums. You've got 21 that are some less than 8, but then 12 of those got counted twice. So you have to eliminate those. Okay, a calendar. A month is chosen from a year. Find the probability of choosing a month that begins with a vowel. Hmm. Okay, let's write these all out. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Okay, so out of these 12 months, we have one, two, three. Three of those are vowels, so that gives us three twelfths or a fourth. Okay, um, find the probability of choosing a month starting with an M or a J. One, two, three, four, five, five twelfths. Uh, find the probability of selecting a month that begins and ends with a consonant. Begins with a consonant, ends with a consonant. January, ooh, are we counting a Y as a consonant? I think we will. January, February, March, May, June, nope. July, yes. September, yes. November, yes. December, yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight out of twelve. Or two thirds. Two thirds on that one. Okay, so boom, we count a Y as a consonant, not a vowel. Um, so if you did it the other way, you could justify your answer, and that's okay. Uh, find the probability of selecting a month that begins with a consonant, and then select another month that begins with a consonant without replacement. Ooh. Okay, consonants. What did we just say about consonants? We had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So the first ter term, we've got 9 twelfths. But if we choose a second one without replacement, we now have only 11 choices. And if we've chosen that one that is does have a consonant, that would only be eight choices now. So let's reduce this by three, and that's going to give me three-fourths. 
and reduce the 4 and the 8, and that gives me 1, 2, so that's 6 elevenths. 6 out of 11 would be that probability. Okay, find the probability of choosing a month that starts with a vowel given that they end with an R. Okay, so it starts with a vowel given that it ends with an R. So we're looking at the subgroup R's. January, no. February, no. March, no. April, no. May, no. June, no. July, no. August, no. September, yes. October, yes. November, yes. December, yes. Ooh, it's those four at the end of the month, at the end of the year, so four. So four end with an R. What's the probability of choosing a, a one that starts with a vowel? Well, out of these four, which one starts with a vowel? One of them. So one fourth. So that was a condition. Okay. So hopefully you're kind of bringing all these concepts together because they are a little tricky. Okay. PE class surveyed 100 students. Okay, using the data on the table to decide if liking P is dependent or independent of your sex. Okay, I can tell you right now. Look at that table. What can you tell? Do males and females equally enjoy PE? Probably not, but we need to look at the totals. So let's see. Let's take 38 plus 12. So out of our students, 50 of them are male and 50 of them are female to make 100 students. So how many like PE for boys? 38 out of 50. How many like, how many females like PE? 31 out of 50. Are those equal? No, it is dependent. It is not, It um, using the data, decide if liking is independent? No, it is not independent. It is they, they, the probabilities didn't come out the same. It's not equally likely that men and women both like PE, which is kind of obvious, but that's okay. Um, hope this video was helpful on doing the mixed review.